Hello, Legion Gentlemen, boys, girls, dogs, and cats, and welcome back. It's Calm Down Level Up. Today we're here again in our uh, 100 World Tension battle AI only shit. Welcome back. Um, we're actually going to be ending the series. Uh, this episode, this is going to be the last episode. I know that might be disappointing, but we are starting up a new game very soon. I'm, I'm making sure it's going to be epic. I'm doing a lot of tests. That's kind of why I've been uploading very many videos recently. Also, I've just been busy with things. It's finals week right now, so you're going to give me some time for that, but... Uh, um, I'm, I've been doing tests on, on a few mods and stuff that I've been I've been given, made for me, and um, recommended to me. So there's going to be a really cool next game, but let's make this a really cool la last episode. So essentially, um, I have to tell you guys something that happened, though. Uh, I The game did not save after last episode, so what I had to do is I had to actually manually restart the war with Kazakhstan versus the USSR. This is the biggest thing that happened. Um, so last episode kind of got reset. <laughs> As so, like, right here, uh, Morocco and Togo still hold this area. Um, they didn't last time. M Ghana actually took over, and they gave it to um, to some other countries. But, such a what's happened here. Oh, shit, wait. I, I need to check what... South Sudan. Um, I should check the faction list. Okay, so, Syrian Union is just pushed down into here. They, they don't have South Sudan anymore. South Sudan has been liberated. Is it a colony of anybody? Oh yeah, of Djibouti, <laughs> or Djibouti, or however you say that. Um, okay, so that's going on. Soviet Union and uh, Kazakhstan are at war, but it's not really like a crazy war or anything. It's it's pretty quiet. But basically what I'm going to do this episode is um, we're going to take a quick look at what the world is like right now. And then we are going to let the game run for about, I don't know, three hours? And then I'll come back and I'll, we'll see where the world's at. Um, someone's gonna have to capitulate by that time and if no one has I guess I'll let it run for a little while longer um, I'm not gonna do a, a time-lapse or anything um, because it would be annoying to not be able to see the factions and whatnot and uh, I <laughs> I don't have very much space on my computer right now so I can't actually support a you know um, 18 gigabyte file currently so I'm not gonna do that but we'll just come back we'll take a we'll take a look we'll see where everything's at and uh, we'll, we'll you guys can uh, finally cash in your bets after after who won. So um, let's just take a quick look right now. The European Federation knocked out Vietnam uh, completely, er, except for I guess one little spot down there. <laughs> um, and they've reclaimed pretty much all of China from both Pakistan and the African Entente, um, which is East Turkestan, obviously. East Turkestan um, not doing very well. They they don't have very many divisions. It looks like a bunch of these guys are gonna get cut off. This is what America has been focusing right now is recapturing China for um, for India, and it's kind of funny to see that India basically just switched spots like with with China. Except China is obviously not in India right now. Um, China is still in China, just very uh, specific spots. India has most of it. Um, Western Uganda and Raj. Uh, Pretty much the largest and most powerful member of the Syrian Union um, is is here in India, and they've been holding off an attack from the Middle Eastern Coalition for years now, and they they've been holding them off. They've been doing a good job. If they capture uh, this province right here, that would be very good because they could cut off all these guys and uh, kill a bunch of divisions. But I think the Middle Eastern Coalition is pretty pretty much just like an an unstoppable force possibly at this point they they can pump out divisions like no other they they just seemingly never run out of divisions um italy is still holding here uh they have not been capitulated yet but i mean as you can see it's, it's only a matter of time italy i don't think has very many divisions of its own but it's mostly just volunteers holding italy together right now they do have genoa still so that's a good thing i guess but uh iraq is uh, attacking them as well as Austria and you know Turkey. Oh, and would you look at this? Romania did a naval invasion into Morocco. Oh my God! And the, the captured is that Casablanca right there? Yeah, they captured Casablanca. Uh, Morocco might capitulate. So the Middle Eastern Coalition have successfully landed in Morocco on the other side. Uh, let's see what these. There's there's a lot of Moroccans here. Like we checked last time, and they were making an army. Um, we can see what what their army is like 32 so they have been building an army they've been doing good better you know they could fight off this invasion but once this kind of thing starts happening i think it's pretty much going to be over pretty soon and look they've captured a lot so far and morocco's army is out here in the desert going the wrong way too they're going out to this front 
um, when they should probably be protecting their home. But it looks like they, they have been protecting uh, naval, naval ports and stuff, well, most of them. They, they, they didn't protect Casablanca, though, so... That might mean that when uh, Morocco capitulates, the entire faction would capitulate. I'm not sure, though. We should check which... Where, where is a... Okay, Slovakia. Morocco and East Turkestan both need to capitulate in order for the African Entente to capitulate, so... It's looking like both those countries are going to capitulate. Obviously, India and America are pushing into uh, into East Turkestan very fast, and uh, so, and you know East Turkestan is probably not going to survive for much longer. And it looks like Morocco, to oh man, they just landed another one here, um, cutting off what is this area? This area is called like Western Sahara, cutting off Western Sahara from the rest of Morocco. Morocco is going to be dying pretty soon here, boys. That's actually a, quite a big thing because Morocco is one of the major nations. Oh shit, yeah, they just capitulated. Boom. One of the first, like, major, um, faction leaders that are gonna capitulate in this game. For a while. For a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time of war. So, alright guys, I'm just gonna let this game run for a while. Um, I'm gonna stop the recording. We'll pick up in a little bit here. And I'll see you guys, uh, after it's done. Alright, peace. Well, boys, welcome back to our game. We're here at the end of our series. Before we start Season 3, uh, if you remember, I was here earlier. Actually, just like probably a, a second ago in this video. I'm just being stupid right now. Uh, welcome back. So, I let this game run for about four or five hours. And um, this is what we've come to, alright? So, um, obviously, there has not been a major peace deal quite yet. Except there has been one. There was one major peace deal. Um, and that took place right here. So... Obviously, the Moroccans were getting navally invaded. Holy shit, look at this. They were getting navally invaded, and uh, they they were going to die. And they did die. They Morocco capitulated, shit. And then, uh, this guy over here capitulated. East Turkestan capitulated. Now it's called the Republic of China, though. Um, which is a little... St oh, wait, East, East Turkestan. It's still called that. Republic of China controls this area. It's a different different than this Republic of China. There's, there's two different Republics of China. Um, for some reason, but that's just how, how the game works. Oh, wait, no, shit. I'm an idiot. It's it's this guy right here. <laughs> this guy controls this, this territory. But yeah, another thing that happened was um, India, or Chinese India, was completely liberated by the Americans and the Indians and Chinese, and um, actually pushed into uh, Pakistan and defeated Pakistan. So Pakistan was now split between Palestinian and Persia, and India, and um, there is a long-going stalemate here between the Europeans and the Middle Eastern Coalition. And the Middle Eastern Coalition. As for the Asian Entente, a lot of them were puppeted, a few of them were annexed. Um, I think this stuff's still just under occupation, but as you can see, like, British Saharan Africa was colonized. Morocco um, was possibly made a puppet? No, they, they were not made a puppet, but they were made social democrats so that um, they were forced to join the uh, Middle Eastern Coalition. Every country, by the way, that, that was capitulated from the African Entente had to join. Um, Egyptian Algeria. Algeria is now an Egyptian colony. Egypt is very, very large. Um, Zambian Sudan here. Obviously, the uh, Syrian Union of Nations still has not capitulated, even though it's just about a couple little super tiny countries now. Um, just down there. That's that's what they are now. Middle Eastern Coalition still has not taken Ireland or landed in America successfully, but that's not really um, going to be expected. They uh, the Europeans have not landed in in Brazil, and uh, the Europeans have not relanded in Europe anywhere. Um, it's all been unsuccessful. One really cool thing that happened while I was gone, which I actually watched while I was not recording, was um, the Soviet Union. So I want to point out something about the Soviet Union. Um, they, they are still alive, obviously. They have kept North Korea alive. North Korea has faced naval invasions time after time after time, and the, the uh, the Soviet Union has kept them going. Um, they, they look, they look a little bigger than they did before. That's because they are, if they do look a little bigger. Um, they actually hold Moscow now, so they were able to push into Moscow. And, uh, in order for them to do that, they had to declare war on the Middle Eastern Coalition. And that's what they did. They started invading the Middle Eastern Coalition. If you remember last episode, um... The Soviet Union had roughly like 20 or 30 divisions. If we check now, they changed some shit. They changed some policies or something because 
They have... Oh, shit. That's way more than it had before. 520 divisions. Last time I checked, they had like 360. Um, but yeah, so the Soviet Union built a grand army and assaulted um, parts of uh, parts of Russia here. They assaulted further up. And they even declared war on Transnistria and Moldova um, and took them over. I think Transnistria was puppeted, but Moldova was just... Um, their government was replaced and they were forced to join the... Uh, they were forced to join the faction. So guys, there obviously was not a very clear winner in this game. Um, in order for, to see like some real uh, peace deals, I think we would have to let this game run for a really long time, and that's just not something I can really do. So we're going to call this, uh, we're gonna um, announce first place, second place, third place. Um, sadly, I'm not, I'm not gonna let you guys vote on it because it's pretty obvious. If I let you guys vote, the uh, Glacian Concord would win. <laughs> so I'm gonna not let you guys do that. Um, but first place, actually, we'll, we'll do third place first. And we're doing by faction, by the way. Third place goes to the Asian Entente. So the Asian Entente with Soviet Union had a really cool end game. Um, so began invading um, more western parts of Russia, retaking those lands that the uh, Russian state lost quite a lot, quite a long time ago. The uh, Soviet Union came um, very far. They used to just be out here in Siberia. They pushed up here into the Ural Mountains, pushed past the mountains, and then ended up taking all this land, reconnecting uh, Volograd, retaking Volograd, making it their capital. They used to just be a Siberian uh, nation, all the while fighting uh, the Syrian Union of Nations with the Russian state, the European Federation. They've been fighting Americans, and they've been fighting Indians. That have gotten up here they've been fighting chinese they were at war with kazakhstan but they actually ended up white piecing i i forced them to go to war i i um manually got into the country and i forced them to go to war because um they uh they were at war in the previous save which did not save so i, I manually went and made sure they did the same thing to keep it consistent uh, but they actually white piece and uh nothing changed so um kazakhstan and the soviet union stayed at peace they invaded ukraine they came up here. They did pretty good. They have not reached Belarus yet, but it's taking a very long time. They're slowly but surely pushing up. Like, just every hour or two I check, they're further over this way. So, I, I mean, obviously, even they've taken, like, most of the Ukraine already. So, they're doing pretty good there. Not to mention their massive fleet. They have, like, one of the largest fleets in the, in the entire game. So, they're doing pretty good, guys. Second place is going to go to the European Federation. Just, um, they, I was going to give them first place, but, you know, they they really lost Europe. They did not do very good in Europe. They, they had the chance, remember back when they, they came up into Austria's tail, they almost capitulated Austria. They did very well. Um, but now even Italy has succumbed to an Iraqi invasion. So Iraq holds all of this area here. Um, they, they really failed Europe, and Europe's where they're from, you know? So there's only a couple countries left, like like Bosnia and, you know, Ireland, they're still in Europe technically, but, um, and actually Greece is still alive in Crete down there too. So Greece is still doing okay. But, um, what they've done good is they have, have very heavily defended, uh, Ireland. Ireland has succumbed to literally hundreds of naval invasions or had literally hundreds of naval invasions and, uh, never once have they lost Ireland. So Ireland has been holding strong Ireland being the leader of the entire faction. Obviously, too, the United States did a very good job at succumbing, or I mean, uh, capitulating the South, and Texas and Florida had to help them because the South actually invaded Texas and Florida. So the United States did a very good job, and even teaming up with Canada and Quebec, I, I wanted to set up this game to where Quebec would be kind of a hostile country, uh, but they, they ended up not, and they ended up actually being part of the European Union, or the European Federation. But, uh... The European Federation, the, the real reason that they're in second is because of their end game coming back in into India um, and China, recapturing it all. As you can see, there, there's so much here. And I wanted to point out something as well. Uh, India's manpower is 133 million. Well, that's literally their manpower right now. So, I mean, I guess that's to be expected when you hold the two most populous countries in the world. Uh, and, and, I mean, Vietnam. There's a lot of people in Vietnam as well. And first place goes to the Middle Eastern Coalition, the country or the faction that uh, rose up right after the Syrian Union, um, you know, was the top dog. They, they took down the Syrian Union in a 
in a couple days, like they just went straight into the Europe, the Syrian capital with Turkey. They went straight into Baghdad. They went straight into, I think, probably Egypt as well. Um, they just quickly swarm straight into all the capitals of the Syrian Union and uh, pretty much just took over their whole faction, made them all capitulate extremely fast and became the top dog. And to all against all odds, every single invasion against them, they've always come out on top, getting stronger every time. They have, like, got to be like 75% of the landmass in Europe. Maybe, maybe more like 60, I don't know. Hard to tell. Um, but they control so much land. Looking into Africa too, they control the entire African coast, uh, northern African coast from Egypt, all the way down here to uh, this this spot right here, not Nokchot, <laughs> that area, um, which actually Romania controls as a colony. It's not it's not um actually a colony though. It's just a controlled area, so uh, they don't really own that area yet. Even though they did lose a lot of southern Africa to Mozambique when Mozambique was in the uh, was in the African Entente, they still do hold on to it now after they lost. And all these countries are very good for troops, troop counts. And of course, obviously, they they hold the entire Middle East, except for Jordan and a couple countries down here in the uh, Arabian Peninsula. So the Middle Eastern Co Coalition has done amazing. Um, even though they're pretty much stalemated everywhere at this point, they've done so good. Uh, they, they got all the strategic countries to join Britain when Britain joined that that was a huge deal when uh, a few others too were, were, were huge deals I think I think it was um, when they capitulated the Ukraine that was like pretty much foreshadowed what was gonna happen uh, they were just gonna win because if anyone was gonna stop them it was gonna be the Ukraine but I guess it could be the uh, it could be the Soviet Union at this point if we let this game run for a very long time I wonder if the Soviet Union would win you guys should let me know if you guys think that that would happen but yeah, guys, and the leader of that faction that won first place is Turkey. So technically, we we could we could say that Turkey won the game, um, being the leader of the faction. But at the same time, they they did uh, be they were capitulated at one point from uh, Morocco. Morocco also an honorable mention. You did a really good job, Morocco, for for being a little Morocco. You are, jeez. A um, few few other honorable honorable mentions. The uh, African Islamic Alliance first major war against the Syrian Union uh, was the African Alliance they did very good actually during that war until the end um, and they did capitulate um, but they are still here it's a relic from the past it's kind of like it's kind of like when you dig into uh, Arctic ice and you can see all the layers from the previous years that's kind of what this is it's the the African Islamic Alliance an old relic from an, an, a different time they're actually in, invading the uh, European Union or European Federation right now because they're at war with America from the time when America declared war on Afghanistan way back when so they're actually doing a little bit still right now but a relic from the past another honorable mention the Glacian conquered at I think might have been the second faction um, the the African Entente was the first faction to ever form and I'm surprised actually that the African Entente didn't wasn't you know left any remaining members because usually when a faction falls oh shit though they still exist look they're they're still in central america so <laughs> the african entente still exists it's here uh nicaragua and costa rica both still in a faction there might be one or two uh other people other countries that are still in the faction as well just somewhere somewhere around um pretty probably pretty invisible Look for blue, I guess. Oh yeah, look, Lith Lesotho and uh, this, these islands here. So there's still a few members. So um, that that faction still exists. But the Glacian Conquered that was the one I wanted to get to. I think they were like the second or third faction. Um, they they won the only war that they were ever in, which was this war here in Belgium. And uh, for that, they have a 100% win record. So they've got to get on the record somewhere there, right? They've got to have some sort of Guinness Book of World Records there. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for all the support on this series. There is going to be another season starting soon. Um, if you have any mods that you would like to see in that new season, you should let me know on Discord or anywhere, uh, email, maybe even YouTube comments. Less likely for me to see it on YouTube comments just because a lot of YouTube comments recently, but uh, I will I will try to read them all. Um, if you make mods, make sure to tell me on, on any of these things I, I just told you and tell me if you have a good one. Someone recently just showed me a mod that makes it so that in uh, Millennium Dawn 
um, the, the the European nations and others will more likely go down the uh, paths that will go down to like fascist or you know like Italy will go down to the rebuild the Roman Empire and shit. So that will be in the next season. It's a pretty cool mod. I tested it out and it works. Um, so I will be using that and a few others. I'm not going to give away too much though. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you guys all next time. Peace. Да